Now, I want to talk about uh, a psychologist specialising in addiction. Cameron Brown's his name. He says that retired footy players are among the greatest risk for drug use and uh, because of the way that they, the high they get when they're actually playing sport. I want to find out more about it on the line now. Cameron Brown, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I read some of the material to start with about this idea of a link between athletes and addiction. And I, to be honest with you, I thought, oh, yeah, just an excuse, just an excuse. But then I started to think, well, if athletes talk about getting a high when they break through the pain barrier and they get a high from their, from their athleticism, then I suppose it makes sense they may be looking for a high either after their competition finishes or, or in, in down days. Yeah, absolutely. Like you say, that high... Um what they call the runner's high um, is very much a, um, a result of, of endorphins, um, which very much mimics uh, the, act, the action of other drugs, things like um, well, morphine, for one, um, but other drugs that may um, target the reward system in the brain. So when, if you get an athlete who is uh, maybe over, over some years has um, had this um, endorphin experience, this, um, this, this rush of, uh, of, of pleasure and excitement, um, are they then more susceptible for their, their brain and body to be saying, hey, I like that, let's find other ways to get it? Yeah, uh, I mean, that could definitely be the case. And, and much to say in, in our, every other high-stress industry, um, we, we do see people ending their career and looking for um, other avenues to, to get that same sort of excitement in their life. And for some of those, they do turn to, um, to drugs and alcohol. And this is where sometimes methamphetamine and cocaine would, would step in. Yeah, absolutely, as well as um, every other um, illicit drug, as well as alcohol as well, because they do mimic the same um, reward circuitry in the brain that, that does that, gives that stimulation and, and tells the brain, I like that, let's do it again. But on, on the other side of this, uh, I would think that athletes are far more disciplined, say, than I am, uh, and a lot of people would be, and so because of just what they have done in their lives, surely they'd have more discipline to say, this is wrong, this is bad, I'm not doing my body any good by following this path. Yeah, yeah, true, but uh, the same goes for things like depression and anxiety, but it, it's really not a choice. Um, in the end, we don't come down to say that, that addiction is a choice that someone chooses. Um, and in saying that, if we're looking at uh, the end of someone's career, um, we, we look at also them losing a, a lot of the support networks um, with that social or financial or sponsorship. Um, we see them lose a lot of those support networks that they may have previously had um, to get them through those hard times. How much of that could add to that, the, the, the hero worship, the adulation, the things like, you know, I'm a star and suddenly I used to be Joe Blow hero? Yeah, the, um, addiction is what we call a um, biological, social and psychological um, illness. Um, and, and all of those things impact the illness. And like you say, if, if someone um, has the adoration of the fans, um, it, you know, hundreds of thousands of people um, loving, and, uh, loving them and cheering for them, and then that disappears, and the next new guys on the, on the scene, then that absolutely may lead to some self-esteem issues or depression or anxiety that may then knock on into substance abuse. Yeah, I notice you use the word illness. Do you, are you one of those people who thinks that um, that addiction is a disease or an illness? Yes, absolutely. And more and more evidence is showing us that that it is a an illness um, in the in the reward circuitry of the brain. Okay, but you don't say it's a, a disease, would you? Well, it's, a, it's called the disease concept. Um, it, it's the way we we describe. Yeah, see, we're, we're, part, we're, we're part company of that because I would say that uh, cigarette smoking is a an addiction, uh, lung cancer from cigarette smoking is the disease you get. Uh, I make that distinction, and I, I think it's a fair one to make. Yeah, okay. Um, absolutely, and, and we can see that, um, obviously, in that, that concept of choice. But the other thing is, though, that we see in, in um, imagery, imagery studies of the brain is that people who um, suffer from addiction, uh, their brains don't actually work in the same manner um, as those who... Um, who don't use drugs, um, and we can uh, we can then extrapolate that against say heart disease. When we, we look at imaging studies of both of a normal and a diseased heart, then we can see that they're um, they're not one of them is not working the same way. So in that term, that's that's why we term it um, yeah, a disease yeah. per se. And so, how, how do you how do you quote cure this this, this illness? Mm -hmm. So so the illness is um, confined, I suppose, on on those three levels. Um, biologically, um, psychologically, and socially. So, changing socially, changing um, social networks that may encourage use. Psychologically, changing underlying um, belief systems, um, and biologically, obviously, removing um, the drug as well as increasing things like um, adaptive mechanisms, things like exercise again. 
um, and sometimes, in some cases, um, other medication. Yeah, yeah. And going back to exercise. Okay, it's a fascinating theory. I thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Psychologist who concentrates on addictions is Cameron.